Hello and welcome once again to an Armour 3 E3 showcase, this time taking a closer look at fire support options. We've got a few things that we can introduce here. We'll be engaging a stronger force from range, calling in an artillery strike, close air support, and taking a brief look at our prototype contact sensitive tutorial system. More on that later. So to give you an idea of the enemy strength, we'll take a look at the base from roughly half a click away. There are two anti-air vehicles, one over here somewhere, and one just there, which I'll need to engage before sending in a couple of attack choppers. Taking a look from a circling UAV, the thermal camera highlights heat signatures from personnel and vehicles with their engines switched on. I might have mentioned that we've already called in one strike, which we're seeing the results of there. And if I can get into position and get a sight of our second target, we'll use our hint system to help us call in another. We know that there's a fair number of features and complexity associated with our game. Even those things which perhaps aren't so complex are nevertheless non-standard, so we accept that it's up to us to help introduce functionality. Things like this hint system are intended to be an unobtrusive method of offering support to the player. By unobtrusive, I mean that it's a modular system integrated into the missions themselves, which can be quickly disabled for those players more familiar with the game, accessed optionally for other players who might benefit from a quick reference for which keys to press, and so on. Okay, we've skipped ahead to the fireworks. I think it's worth mentioning that our support are actual units present in the game world, perhaps a few kilometers away, so when I'm calling in support, I do need to wait for them to prepare, to fire, and for the rounds to get to the target. It also means that if the enemy is able to physically take my supports out, they won't be available to me. Taking a look again from above, we can see the burning wrecks of the anti-air defenses, which means my helicopter is going to have a much better chance of providing effective support. Skipping a little closer into the base, we can see what kind of damage we're doing. Now, obviously I'm not directly controlling these helicopters myself. That's not to say it's scripted though. It's a case of our AI determining the highest value targets and engaging them autonomously. Part of the charm and perhaps part of the challenge of playing armor is the knowledge that these helicopters may be shot down in one playthrough and might wipe out every living target in the next. Here, for example, there's an enemy APC pinning me down. Perhaps on another playthrough, this vehicle wouldn't be here, or would have been taken out from a mile away by our air support. Now he's opened up on me, though. He's made himself a much bigger target. So now my support is engaging him, and I should be able to continue ramboing around the base. Of course, I could record another playthrough and maybe not run around the enemy position like a headless chicken, but I kind of want to demonstrate this aspect of armor. It's a challenge, sometimes it's brutal, but it's also one of the most unique combat gameplay experiences that you can find. If we can just remove a few of the wonky barriers getting in the way, provide more intuitive controls, create more natural responses, then we can set back and say, all right, this is armor three, this is our vision of war, now get to it. 